this whole crop of very gifted welterweights who now stand to succeed Floyd Mayweather. They all came up together. They were all contemporaries. Sean Porter wins this fight. He becomes arguably the best fighter in the most abundantly talented division in boxing. We're here to figure out who he is. So you get to be champ. What kind of things are you going to buy? Nothing. Nothing? Mm -mm. You're not going to buy, like, Bugattis, Maseratis, whatever no. Audis? Mm-mm. I don't have a dream car. I like to travel. Where are so, you going to go? I don't know, everywhere. I almost feel like, um, like fighting's like music. To be able to earn the right to improvise, you have to know every fundamental by rote. I'm not sure guys learn like that anymore. I don't think so. I mean, your dad taught you like that. Yeah, my dad taught me like that, and he still teaches me like that. <laughs> There's so many times I feel like I'm being held back, but it's because he wants it to come off perfectly. He wants the simple stuff to come out before the complex stuff. There it is. Whenever I went by here, Floyd was up there, home of the champ. So it's, there's a vacancy. You may want to fill that. Ever since I moved here, his face has been up on this MGM building. Why wouldn't they want to replace that, that athlete with another great athlete? Your, your father had a, had a kid brother. He passed. Can you share what happened with me? Uh, the way I understand it, my dad was maybe four, and the kid was about two. His name is James. Um, they were left home alone, and something wasn't right, and my dad wanted to go find his mom, my grandmother. They left home, going down the street where they thought my grandmother might be, and there was a car coming down the street. As they started to cross the street, my dad says that he kept going, and Unfortunately, James pulled back. The driver was drunk and hit James and continued to drive. And James didn't make it through that accident. Because your dad was entrusted as his brother's protector. Mm -hmm. And his brother passed mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that maybe he's just bearing down on you even harder? I know that he has a mindset of, I will not fail. That's how we are, but that could have also have come from what happened with James. How do you handle him? I, I allow him to teach me the way he needs to teach me. I digest it in a way that's fruitful for both of us, and then we move forward. Didn't you ever want to just say, I ain't doing it your way, Dad? Or Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, but I number one, I know he won't stand for that. And then number two, I'm, I'm being so honest with you right now. There have been times that I've done that and jumped in the car and left the gym or whatever, and I'm not a mile from the gym before I'm realizing that he was right. Tell me what you remember most about the amateurs and also what you remember about Keith Thurman. Uh, Keith Thurman, I make a joke at saying, I remember seeing a kid with long hair knock guys out, you know? That's what he did, even in the amateur program, was he knocked guys out. Um, but there was always that chance that if he didn't knock you out, you, you would beat him. I saw a few guys outbox him, and, but I've seen a lot of guys take some heavy heat from him. Let's go uh, get fitted for a suit. OK. Twelve, you went down to Florida. Keith was training for a fight with Maidana that, that didn't come off. How many rounds would you say you all sparred? Mm, probably 20 to 30, maybe, give or take, a little more, a little less. Who got the better of? Yeah. I think if there was a judge in the room, that judge would have went for Sean Porter. I was the more aggressive, like I always am, and, and you know, he, he moved a little bit more than, than we expected him to. So your father said that he turned his back on you in sparring, did he? I don't remember uh, him literally turning his back and running. There, there could have been, you know, something that happened, and it happened very quick for me, and I didn't see it, so 
I can't really, you know, confirm that, yeah, he ran for me. What happened, Dad? He turned his back and took a good three or four steps and, uh, you know, to get away. And uh, he remembers that. He knows that. And uh, what he said to me afterwards, man, he's strong, you know. And that's no surprise, nothing new to me, because at that point in time, it was time for us to leave because we couldn't get the work that we needed. We needed somebody that was going to actually put down some hard physical sessions with us, and he didn't have any interest in doing that. When I see Keith, I see a fighter who's really coming into his greatness. The guy's extraordinarily talented, as are you, but everybody's got his weaknesses. What are his? Yeah, I don't think he's as talented as you just described, and, and that's an honest opinion from watching him over his, we've been studying film, and I just can't pick anything special about Keith. You can faint him and, and get him to react. When someone reacts, then you see where they're going to be open. We've seen he's been a little vulnerable to the body. And I've also heard that, you know, he's he doesn't have the chin or he has a questionable chin. So, you know, those those all will play a role in this fight. You, Danny, Kel Brook, Keith Thurman, we're coming up on what could be a really special time mm -hmm. in this division. Mm -hmm. No secret, I'm not afraid to fight any of those guys, that I want to fight those guys. So it's all about what you want for your sport, what you want for your family and, and, and your legacy and your career. If you want to be a part of greatness, then let's all fight. I've never seen a kid talk about his father the way he talks about you. <laughs> Basically, the question I, I put to him was, Stemming from the death of your of your brother, yeah. the, had things worked out the way they did because you lost a brother. You know, I've always been looking for my brother since that happened. That's has always been something that I've needed. And um, growing up, you know, I would always make sure some other kid got to school safely or protected a kid from a bully, you know? I love fighting bullies, you know? Because I always felt like I was protecting what I couldn't protect. You're a tough guy. Yeah, absolutely. You've been around. Yeah. You're scared to death of letting him go. Well, what I'm, what I'm, I'm talking about as far as him going out into the world as his own, I'm not afraid to let him do that because the work has been done, you know? Yeah, I, I, I taught him well, and he listened well. He's made the right choices and the right decisions. I'm confident in that. We've ridden camels in the Sahara Desert together. We've jumped out of planes 15,000 feet. We haven't been scuba diving yet. You know, there's things that we want to do that we enjoy doing, and yeah, he's a lot like having that brother that I didn't have, and a lot of people look at us and say, oh, you guys look like brothers, and you know, at some point in time, you know, throughout the day, I think about that, and I think about my brother, but. Sean is his own man. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Who needs who more? <laughs> that's a, that's a, uh, yeah. He probably raised me as much as I raised him. <laughs>